Hi, I want to talk to you a little bit about Beatmaker from a uh, standard DAW point of view. Share a few things with you. I kind of learned learned over a long period of time here because uh, some of the uh, some of this information is a little confusing if you've never used something like Beatmaker before. If you're coming to it from a straight DAW like uh, Reaper or Pro Tools, so let's have a look. When you start. Beatmaker, this is what you come up with. You'll start a new session to keep things clean, simple. And this is the screen you see. For most people, this is confusing because this isn't even what you see uh, at any point if you're using a standard DAW. But if you look over here on the left, you see the, uh, the, uh, the dots and lines. That takes you to the, uh, what they call the song view. And this is where you have the tracks or track view, if you like. Where you can see the tracks, and it's more like the the uh, the nonlinear editing systems that you're used to. But let's get back. So, so this is where you come up. Something interesting to note about this, and it's it's based on an MPC, which is a kind of a of a hardware uh, sampler that has pads on it, and you assign samples to the pads. But within Beatmaker, you can assign instruments, AUVs. Uh, MIDI channels, actual audio, to the pads. So, and interesting, interestingly enough, these pads and the bank, as you see up here, bank A, you can add another bank. This is how you add banks. These banks operate very much like uh, buses. If you're familiar with, uh, with mixing at all, you know that there are buses you can, you can, and it's like a bus, like, a, like when you put people on. So you have a bus, say bus A, you can put all different uh, instruments in the different seats on the bus. And the, bus goes to, ooh, the bus goes to a certain destination. So, I mean, all those seats go into the, to the same destination. So all these instruments would go to the same destination. Samples, audio, AUVs, all that. And it, it is actually very um very massive and flexible in this thing because you have all these banks i'm not sure how many um a lot and you have all these pads you have uh three four five six eight pages of pads so let's keep it simple these are easy enough to remove as well delete Long hold, delete. Long hold is something that obviously is something you'll use as a way to work within this app. So here we are. So you're faced with this and you're like, what the heck is this thing I'm looking at? Well, let's look at these as channel inputs. Um, let's start with something simple. Um, let's start with a plugin. If you look across the top here, see this is the input selection area, like your your files and directories and so forth. So we're going to go look at plugins. We're going to look at an audio unit for simplicity and something that's pretty much rock solid, I think anyway, is uh, BS16. So it does not this does not have a search function, which is kind of a bummer, which would be nice. But we'll see, maybe someday. This program is actually pretty amazing if you if you really get to know it. Okay, so here the the uh, pads have changed color. This means the, the uh, instrument is loaded. We can close this, get it out of the way. And now you see you have, this is the, another thing that's really great about this, uh, this program. This, this is not in anything else. You can buy things like it as a, as a plugin, but this interface, this section on the, on the left here is, uh, is really great. So right now we're looking at the velocity section and Do things like that. Now, to some people, these, this doesn't matter, but to some people, it really does. And not only that, you can do rolls. And this is great for programming drums. It's something that I'm a real stickler about. Velocity is something that is not 
I guess it's too much work to put it into things. It's not very popular anymore. Nobody really cares about it. But it makes all the difference uh, in some kinds of music because it actually adds expression and, and uh, emotion. But anyway, that works. You've got, uh, you've got the typical um, uh, modulation wheel and pitch wheel. This is great too. You've got scales. You've got all these scales. Major scale. Minor pentatonic. Oh, here's a trick too. You can assign velocity to the pads. This took a while to figure out too. Turn this on. You see how I got that? There's a little gear icon here, hiding over here. Pads velocity, fixed velocity. You can set a fixed velocity for all the pads too. So I've turned pad velocity on. So now so now you have that. Another thing that's great for drumming. Oh, okay, where were we? Scales. Of course, this also works in keyboard. Now, again, mind the edges of this thing. You're going to see se selectable information and access to things around the edges, primarily the top and this left side. So you see keys here. We go to the keys. You have velocity, which you can turn off if you want to, or turn on. Octave selection, keyboard size. This is the AV, AUV uh, interface. You'll see that up here as well. Again, we have all these awesome uh, uh, scales. So this is all part of the MPC interface in the front that you opened up with this, this looking thing here. Um, and again, this is like a bus. Now in this case, it's not operating as a bus. When you go to the mixer, you'll see there's only one fader for the bank. Because we only have one instance loaded of anything, uh, as you see here. You can load more things here. So, let's pick that second slot. Let's uh, load a bank. Let's load a plugin. Let's load um, something simple. Go ahead simple. Oh, poison's nice, I guess. Let's load that. So it's loading poison. Here's poison. Now, poison BS16. Access everything the same way. It has all the same access to the pads. You have to select it. You go up here on the right hand side. We're in the keys mode. Keys mode is like the piano keys. Now to change the sound to get to that other pad that we loaded the sound in on, you have to go to select, select the pad, and then go back to keys mode. Take select off. And there you are. So now you have two things loaded on bank A. Now if we go to the mixer, and if you double click on that, on the bank, bank A, you see now we have B16 and Poison 202. These each have their own faders. These each have their own options for MIDI effects and audio effects. Each one. For instance, if I load an audio effect here, say, I don't know, 6-band EQ. Okay, there it is. That's now on the BS16. Here's something to be uh, to be aware of. If I, I just made a mistake. Oh, no, yes, I just made a mistake. I put that on the whole bank. So now that is like the subgroup. 
that EQ services everything you put on every pad in that. I don't want that. So let's get rid of that. What I want to do is put an effect individually on these two different instruments. So select BS16. Here, it doesn't really matter. You have to select it here. Let's see, BS16, pad one. If you click on that, you see, or just touch on the, let me show you what I did again. This little box here was grayed out. That means you're working in a bank. When you activate the little box, you see all the little pads are active. That means you're in, in uh, pad mode. And we've got the BS16 selected. It doesn't show you all the pads here. You, you have to hit it. And then you'll see BS16 select pad. Did you see that little, little deal there? That's another thing that you might get lost on. It says BS16 because that was the first thing I loaded on the bank. You can change that. And that's a little confusing for now. So we'll change that in a minute. BS16. Select pad is over here. You can hardly see it. So we've selected the BS16. Now we can add an audio effect. Let's add the EQ. Now if we go to this bank select again, or select a pad again, and we go to poison, there's nothing there. So on Poison's audio effect, I could put whatever, a bit crusher. So now, between these two, they have two different effects on them. It would be nice if you could shift that this way, but you can't. Oh, you can preview the sound if you double tap. To see the different pads, you have to go to this. Or this, I'm sorry. You have to go to this up here in the upper left corner. That shows the pad you're on. To get back to the BS16 pad, I got it selected here. Now we're back at the BS16. So as you can see, it's a, it might be a little confusing. I mean, if you're not familiar with a lot of this stuff, it can be a little confusing. But when we came up to this, it was just a bunch of white squares. Then we loaded in BS16. And we can rename that now. Is it holding or is it the little dots? It's the little dots on the right there. That's another thing you'll see through here. So we'll just call this keys. So now this becomes like a key bus. And so on the pads, I can put I can put put something on all these pads. And then you can assign whatever MIDI effects or whatever audio effects to each, every, each and every individual pad. It can each have its own effects, both audio and MIDI effects. Then, if you go to the, to the mixer, those will all show up if you double click. If you get out of that and go back to the bank mode, this is the, the standard, this is like looking at your buses. This is your keys bus. This will affect everything that you put on all the pads in there, all the different instruments. Double click on that and you'll see listed out, if we put more things all across here, all the different instruments you have on the pads. To me, that's pretty, that's pretty cool. That's pretty amazing. You can do the same thing with audio. So it has another step, but I'll either show you that this in this video or maybe I'll cut it out of this one and put it on a separate video. So that's an interesting thing you may not have known about Beatmaker. Um, that's pretty cool.